Right, here's where we start for you on all angles at 2 o'clock. Members of the BRICS Bloc of Nations continue to strengthen ties on day two of the 15th summit in Johannesburg. Nations wishing to join the grouping are also present at the Santon Convention Center. Senior reporter Sipamandla Koke is monitoring the summit. He joins us now with the latest. Uh, Sipamandla, President Cyril Ramaphosa was the first, of course, to address the gathering at lunchtime. What did he say in his opening remarks? His message and statement was mainly focused on strengthening cooperation between South Africa and BRICS member states, but also reiterating the fact that South Africa's position is that of supporting the BRICS membership expansion, saying the more countries join this bloc, it will become more powerful. It's seen as the alternative in terms of challenging the status quo globally when you talk about global politics and global economy, saying there needs to be more cooperation between BRICS member states in ensuring that they benefit in terms of trade, investment and business that is conducted among themselves. Of course, this is in line with what transpired yesterday when there was the BRICS Business Forum, which was addressed by heads of states yesterday and BRICS Business Forum members engaging with each other, you know, trying to check what opportunities are there, what challenges lie ahead and how can those be resolved. But most importantly, what needs to be done to strengthen cooperation? Let's take a listen to the President of the Republic of South Africa addressing the summit earlier today. The BRICS partnership, which has been growing in importance and influence over the years, must be harnessed to drive an inclusive global economic recovery. Advancing the African agenda for us is a strategic priority as South Africa during its chairship of BRICS. It is for this reason that we have chosen as the theme for this year's summit, BRICS and Africa a partnership for mutually accelerated growth, sustainability, and inclusive multilateralism. Of course, Russia is represented by its Minister of Foreign Affairs physically here, uh, Sipa, but uh, the President Vladimir Putin also addressed the summit virtually. What did he say? He's pretty much very engaged in terms of participating here, except to say virtually, because the delegation from the Russian Federation is led by their foreign affairs minister. The president of the Russian Federation calling on countries to prioritize the issue of using local currencies when they trade with each other. There have been calls to try and move away from the heavily focused U.S. dollar trade between BRICS member states. The president of the Russian Federation saying they support all those calls to start using local currencies when they trade with each other. And I guess that's the message that will dominate when leaders engage with the president of the new BRICS Development Bank. And they will be talking about issues of trade, global economy. But what does this bloc need to do to ensure that they enhance trade but they benefit their local currencies and even the possible talks of having one BRICS currency which many people say it will be difficult to implement at the moment but that is the discussion and the debate that is taking place. We may not see any finality or or other conclusion on the matter during this 15th BRICS summit here in Johannesburg. However, this is a discussion that will continue to take place moving forward, and I'm sure during the next or upcoming BRICS conference, it will also feature strongly. But we expect that the leaders will touch on that issue when they are having their meetings and engagements this afternoon with the leadership of the new development bank. Take a listen to the president of the Russian Federation. Over the past decades, BRICS investment to global economy have doubled and the cumulative export reached 20 percent of the overall indicator. We are successfully implementing the strategy for BRICS Economic Partnership 2025. 
namely we are strengthening the bilateral cooperation on such areas as diversification of supply chains, de-dollarization and transfer to local currencies in our mutual settlements, digital economy, support for small and medium enterprises, just transfer of technologies and naturally the active part in this process is, is played by business community. And Sipa, there's also the issue of BRICS Plus, right? Uh, opening up the block to other nations. And uh, Brazilian President uh, da Silva also spoke uh, during that uh, particular address. What did he have to say, uh, especially about the possibility of a BRICS Plus, Sipa? It would appear that in principle leaders agree that yes indeed they are willing to accept more members who want to join this block. But there are those who are cautioning against moving with speed and faster pace in terms of opening it up too much. So you have the position of Russia, China, South Africa and India who have been said to be very supportive of that idea. In fact President Cyril Matamela Ramaphosa confirming that South Africa supports the idea of BRICS membership expansion. Initially, Brazil was said to have been reluctant in saying let's accept more people who want to join. They want an approach which includes a phased out approach or rather a phased in approach to say we are going to open it up, we are going to accept few members, there will be BRICS plus, but let's keep the core of this block so that it will continue to be influential to be powerful. But the Brazilian president also touched on another important point here, the point of climate change and BRICS member states. If you take into account that some of the world's biggest polluters include BRICS members such as your China, your India and Brazil in the past with the previous administration of, of former President Bolsonaro, they were said to be taking a very negative stance in terms of their efforts to fight the impact of climate change which is visible and severe in Brazil. You know, that previous administration was said to be pulling out of many structures and agreements that have been signed in trying to fight and mitigate the impact of climate change. But since his return, President Lula da Silva is committed to trying and reversing all those decisions that were taken in terms of his country's position when it comes to climate change and fighting climate change. He called on BRICS member states to come together and fight the impact of climate change. Let's take a listen. The major response for the carbon emissions that cause the climate change were those countries that made their industrial revolution and feed it predatory colonial extractivism. They have an historical debt with the planet Earth and with the humanity. We need to value the Paris Agreement and the Climate Convention instead of outsourcing climate responsibilities for the global south. Brazil is recovering its protagonism on the environmental agenda. The coordination with other, country, with other developing countries that carry tropical forests to act as the climate change copes and biodiversity corps will be vital to give way to our interests. In the summit meeting, the Amazon rainforest that was held some days ago was a landmark for the necessary construction of a sustainable development model with more fairness. All right, senior reporter Sipa Mandla Koke live for us at the Santon Convention Center in Johannesburg, where the 15th annual BRICS Summit is taking place. Let's take